Now we uh, trust that you are comfortable. Yes, thank you. And we thank you for your consideration. And thank you for yours. <coughs> but please, you feel free to proceed. Okay. Um, uh, the gang, Serge and Barry and Myrna, uh, the idea is that we want to get some, a little bit of description of the uh, what the workshop coming up in November is going to be about. Uh, kind of like the way you do with a seminar, you know, just a little description of uh, what points would, might be covered or what have you. And then, it may increase or augment your understanding on many different um, fronts. And we trust that it will also entice a beautiful response. So the title of the workshop is Empowerment. Yes. Powerless uh, versus yeah. Powerfulness. Yes. The standard understanding of powerlessness can be said to be a state of mind where the individual may indeed feel or even be fully convinced that he or she has very little, if any, or perhaps even no control over the affectations or aspects of the occurrences of daily living. Mm -hmm. A victim consciousness, eh? In many respects, even though sometimes it may be extremely subtle, perhaps even that an individual may think they have no such uh, conviction, no such uh, sets of beliefs. Some people may have an understanding that they are born into a particular time, a historical period. They are born into a particular country, nationality, society, culture, tradition, family, family unit. That they are upbringing their past, their circumstances. that all of these things exert such an influence that they have very little if no control at all in altering any such situation that compels them to act or behave or to think rationally or irrationally at all. Mm. That they are more or less destined or fated to be the way they are and that is that. So they're not really feel that they're victims. They feel that they've accepted the way things are. Yes. And once you begin to believe, once you begin to anticipate, to expect, that any such affectations upon your personality governs who you are, who you want to be, who you are trying to be, then, perhaps even ever so subtly, one experiences situations, circumstances, conditions of life that seem to justify that state of mind. Mm -hmm. Because as we have suggested before, and as Therulin has introduced, the universe is a state of mind. The universe is your state of mind. 
So what you experience is generated by, perhaps by default, shall we say, by the state of mind that you hold. And some people will call it by that vibration. Does it make sense to you? Oh yes, I like that a formulation that the universe uh, that I experience is my state of mind because that really opens the door for me to to create what I want because uh, I can change my state of mind. Indeed. And it is nobody else's state of mind. Neither is it any supreme supernatural deity or God state of mind imposed upon you as the priests or religious directors elaborate upon. That is your state of mind, therefore you can do something about your state of mind. And though you may be unable to do anything about anyone else's state of mind, except perhaps exert a small influence here and there, to which they will do what they want to do in either case. But your state of mind is something that is malleable. It is pliable. The plasticity, the fluidity of your state of mind is unbelievable. Yeah. So you can begin to mold it and shape it and design it in such a way that your experiences are not only transformed but also transformational. That one transformation leads into another. That the outcome, the affectations of your state of mind begin to manifest peace, peace of mind, peace of body, health, wealth perhaps, but that first of all it is the state of mind. Do not expect that you will be able to change your state of mind, hence your universe, once you have that peace of mind or once you have mm. the affluence, or once you have the power. It does not work backwards in that sense of the word. Does it make sense to you? Oh yeah, uh, in fact, normally, normally I would think that the, the universe affects my state of mind. You know, if it's a rainy day or a disaster happens, I feel my state of mind affected by that. But uh, it seems to me what you're saying is the exact opposite. Indeed. And altering your state of mind does not in any way, shape or form imply that you can make the rain stop or the rain come, the sun set, the sun rise, the moon set, the moon rise. But it does imply that your personal circumstances do not have to be affected by these kinds of external conditions. Once you can release your attachment to how you want your life and the universe to be, strictly from the ego, logical, mental platform, which is usually filled with struggles and strife, because you are pushing against. And duplicity. Indeed. And accept that by altering the state of your mind, the state of your awareness, regardless whether the sun is setting or rising, the moon is setting or rising, the storm comes and goes, you can hold steadfast in your peace of mind, in your inner joy, and still feel that deep bond or connection with the matrix of all life, what you call source, the womb of existence. Mm. So this is what kind of empowerment you're talking about, is flipping that and equation. Indeed. 
It is not the kind of empowerment that comes from yelling at you from a stage to try to convince you <laughs> that you can step on hot coals and therefore be great and powerful. Because these things come and these do not permanently alter the state of mind, but temporarily titillate it mm. until you fall back in your old habits. We are talking about a state of mind that can transform the universe, your universe. So we will be presenting different simple approaches and practices and perspective that will rejoice you and warm the cockles of your heart as well as set your mind and awareness on fire in such a way that you can burn away that which is old and wears you down from experiencing your own sovereignty. The sovereignty that stems from being bonded or united with Source. Mm. So we trust that this might indeed be satisfactory yes I think it's wonderful it should also be known that this is not going to be for those who are faint of heart <laughs> you said that before and, and it, uh, because it may require that you enter um, or travel outside of your mental comfort zones and release um, perhaps some shadows that you have thought you had buried in your awareness, mm. never to be seen again. But like old ghosts, some of these buried shadows tend to haunt. Correct? Yes. So it is perhaps a powerful tool to clean house, get rid of the cobwebs in the attic, and whatever nefarious little shadows you have shoved into the mm, basement of consciousness. Well, I like what you say about uh, getting outside your comfort zone, Chris. Uh, a couple times you said, this may, move you, move, this may move you a little bit outside your comfort zone, but it's going to move you into a wider comfort zone. And it, that is usually missed. Uh, because if you are mm, invited to step outside of your comfort zone, you may recognize that what you thought was your comfort zone was not a comfort zone. It may even have been a prison. Mm. So if you have prisoners in a prison and you give them drips and paint and wallpaper and artwork to decorate their cell. Does it mean they are no longer in a prison? No, they've changed the uh, camouflage is all. Indeed. Now we are not necessarily implying that you are prisoners, that you have done something wrong, but we are saying that often the individual does not yet recognize that they have imprisoned themselves through indoctrination and conditioning that says that they are perhaps sinful, shameful, full of iniquity, and so on and so forth. And once you buy into that kind of worldview, then of course, as with all things that you believe, it becomes true. Mm. So the idea here is to transform the nature of the very beliefs or convictions that you hold. Oh, that's good. And in this way, free yourselves from old patterns, old paradigms, psychological and mental crutches that impede your natural flow. Mm, nice. So in this way, we thank you for your consideration. And 
we return Joseph to you. Thank you, Chris.